It's a first for the city of Boston as the council is getting ready to consider paid parental leave for city employees, meaning heterosexual and same-sex couples. WGBH's Adam Riley explains. For some city of Boston employees, becoming a new parent is about to become a whole lot easier. A new ordinance filed in the city council and backed by Mayor Marty Walsh will give certain city employees six weeks of paid parental leave. The mayor says that given the way we live now, it's a necessity. Society is changing. Uh, you know, the numbers of, of, of two parents working now is a lot higher. Uh, mothers and fathers need to go to work. Both men and women would be covered, with full pay for the first two weeks and partial compensation after that. Walsh has been a parental leave booster for a while. As a state rep, he filed legislation to give all new parents eight weeks of unpaid leave. As he sees it, increased flexibility for families is simply smart management. If the employer is able to help the families out on the, on the front end a little bit, uh, they'll have a lot more help on the back end. Now, Mayor Walsh says he hasn't heard from anyone who thinks the new policy is too generous. But there are some critics who say the city still isn't going far enough. Jamie Ladge is a professor at Northeastern who researches work-life integration. Her beef isn't with Boston, but with the huge gap that separates America from the rest of the world when it comes to making parenting and work work together. You have parts of Europe that offer between 80 to 100 percent pay, but again, that's for how long? Uh, up to a year in some in some countries. For the record, Walsh is aware of that gap, and in the coming years, he says he'd like to help close it. Having happy families working for the city, that's our goal. You know, I think uh, I think if we the best, the more opportunities we can give our our, our employees, and I think it, the same in the private sector, the more opportunities you give employees that you, that you can make them feel part of, they'll be happy with it. It's an idea that's sure to make many happy, but perhaps not everyone. Joining me now to talk a little more about this move and the implications are John Hurst, John's president of the Retailers Association of Massachusetts, Boston City Councilor Michelle Wu, one of those who filed the ordinance. Good to see you both. Okay. So Michelle, let me start with you. Why and why now? Is it, you had just had a kid recently. Did that inspire this thing? Yes, it's when you're pregnant and trying to think about what life is going to be like and all the ways it'll be different after the new baby comes, you can't help but feel a little anxious and, and afraid. And in those conversations, this is an issue that affects people all across the city. You know, I want to read between the lines based on Mayor Walsh's history at the State House and what he said to Adam Riley. It seems to me that his hope is this is step one and then ultimately this trickles down or trickles up to private sector employees in the city and beyond. Is that a fair statement? Yeah, we wanted to do something substantive, but that the city could also afford. I assume John Hurst, you have no objection to city employees getting this, Absolutely correct? not. In fact, as far as these proposals go, the councilor's proposal is very moderate and, and makes a lot of sense, I so think. So thanks for coming. It's yeah. good to see you, John. Now, <laughs> now, your concern, obviously, is if it goes beyond that and it comes out into the private sector. Why? Well, you know, there are bills being pushed by the big public unions up at Beacon Hill that don't talk about six weeks and, and not only public uh, employees, but they go to small businesses, full-timers, uh, uh, full-timers, part-timers, the smallest of small businesses, up to 12 weeks. And, and you know, Jim, we're out doing a road show now, uh, talking to our small businesses about what they need to do to comply with the new paid sick leave law. And I can't tell you, in 25 years, I've never seen so much anger because it's a piling on concern, you know, there's the FMLA, the Small Necessities Family Act, Family Medical Leave Act, you know, plan, and, yeah. and now this, and, and really the state proposals are really essentially a family leave, you know, even to take care of yourself or parent for 12 weeks. But John, let me be paid. clear, uh, what you seem to be saying is the concept you can live with, it's the details, how big the employer is, for example, when they extended maternity leave statewide unpaid to paternity leave, it was six or more workers, Family Medical Leave Act is 50 or more, so could there be some compromise where paid parental leave would work, well, but you just at a certain threshold? You can't have this value discussion without an economic discussion. And, and that's the problem that we've run into. And, and you know, we, we, we have too many public policy leaders and public unions that aren't, aren't really understanding that small businesses set their payroll as a percentage of sales. Do you understand you know, that? You're not a public employee union, you're a public employee, absolutely. you're a city council. Do you I understand the impact on very small businesses? Does that not worry you? The bottom line is that if we as a society want to be serious about supporting working families, and especially working women, something has to change. The United States is one of three countries in the world without some form of paid maternity but leave. But what do you do? Let's assume you have six people in a place and all of a sudden I'm picking a number and one of those people goes out on paid maternity or paternity leave, not the city but in a private mm -hmm. sector thing, for uh, four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks. That small employer essentially, unless someone works like a dog, those five, has to essentially create a seventh position and pay for it. How are they supposed to do that? 
We have to look at the bigger picture of what the benefits are in the back end too. As, as Mayor Walsh said, the, in, there's lower turnover, you don't have to train a new employee. If you don't have access to paid leave, you take unpaid leave or you quit the job and then you have to bring in someone new and, and there's a constant churn throughout the Isn't organization. Isn't that really true? The studies I read in the last couple of days, John Hurst, on this thing seem to be saying what Michelle says, that as a retention, productivity, we are the outliers, that professor from Northeastern says. What is that man or woman supposed to do, by the way? They want to take care of their kid. Uh, which I assume you support as a concept. What's their choice? Go home and live with, I can, you live paycheck to paycheck, I'm guessing. Sure. How do they go without a paycheck? The, the basic problem here, Jim, is that we're universally saying that all employers are bad and all employees no, are no, no, good. No. I think we are. That? I think we are. I think, you know, good employers that want to have good employees are going to give the benefit if they can afford it. And and because they want to retain them. Because you, you if you're a good employer, you're going to retain employees, you're going to retain your, your customers. But not every Every employer can afford this type of uh, a benefit, so we just have to look at this very cautiously. You know, in my industry, frankly, all the new sales are going to the internet, and, and this type of proposal in no way affects the Amazon.coms, the competition, which is where all the new competition and all the new sales are going. We need to look at ways to protect our, our small businesses and Main Street. You can't be pro public union and pro small business. You, know, you have to separate these things. Michelle, well doesn't John Hurst make a good point that if as you say and this research says that it's so good for businesses on a whole variety mm -hmm. of fronts, the assumption is they would do it if it turns out they could afford to do it because obviously it's in their self-interest and the corollary being if they don't do it, it's because they can't afford it. Why not let the market determine that? Give them unpaid leave and let the market decide if they get paid. What's wrong with that? We are at a time in, in the city, the state, the country where income inequality is the issue that families are facing. And when you have a stratified system where a single mom who can't afford to take time off uh, without paid leave, then has to leave the workforce, then can't get back into the workforce later because she has a huge gap in her resume, it just leads to further, further stratification. So this is about making sure that families can stay in the workforce, that they continue contributing to the economy. John, how, can we bring, how can we bring down cost for Main Street businesses here in Boston, bring down their costs and raise their sales? You know, I, I don't think government can raise the sales of these small businesses me, on I mean, Main I, Streets in, in Boston. But so we need to find ways, if we're going to create new costs, we also have to find ways to lower their costs. Aren't you responding I'm a former small system? business owner myself, so I get how hard it is to be running these businesses. Our proposal is only about uh, employees of the city of Boston. Right. We want to make sure that the city is setting the tone and setting the standard for what businesses but should be But you do want it to spread, as board. you said. That's your we hope. We absolutely want more people to join in. And organizations of all sizes have found a way to make this work. Last question. It's sort of like, you know, the sense I get from you, if I may, John, is sort of like Charlie Baker on paid sick leave when he was a candidate. I like the concept, but small businesses, you've said it 10 times, small businesses get hurt. So at the threshold he supported was 50, the voters voted otherwise. Is there a number you could pick where you could say to Michelle Wu and people like her, we're on board if the number is X rather than here? Well, on one hand, I'm most concerned about small businesses, but on the other hand, okay, so on the paid sick leave, we chose 11. Okay, so 10, you didn't have to do it. 11, you did. Now, is, so is, is the that- the answer it, no, there's no number? You know, I don't know what the right number is, but you know that, is it is it really a better idea for an employer of 11 than it was for 10? That's really the If the I were dilemma. you, I'd meet with this guy in the green room afterwards. John <laughs> Hurst, it's a pleasure. Thanks so much, Michelle Wu. Good Thank luck and congratulations Thank on you. your kid.